Good morning to everyone. I've never started a workshop a minute before time, so we can break the record here. Um, hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this open day about science-based conservation, achievements, gaps and challenges. Or in Hebrew, Thanks for coming. I see a lot of familiar faces, but many faces whom I don't know, which is great. And a lot of people that came also from far away on time. So thanks for making it. I'm sure you woke up early. Um, a very special welcome to all our guests from overseas. From, uh, we have people here from five continents. Some people came from very far away. So thanks a lot for coming. We have really prominent, very well-known experts from around the world. It's a big honor to be speaking to all these people here today. And um, thank you very much for making the effort. Now you'll have to work a bit in the next few hours. And um, so um, successful conservation depends on many different actors. And uh, we can start with a simple and very abstract triangle which will uh, really represent some of the major players in the conservation or eventually in the successful conservation game. The policymakers, practitioners, and also scientists that play an important role in shaping conservation. Very often, both in Israel and in other places around the world, the connections between these different parts of the triangles are not as um, good as they could be. And actually, our goal here is to try to think and hear about examples from around the world where these connections did not work out and where they worked out better for people that have a lot of experience in these areas. But I'm sure you're all thinking, or at least some of you are thinking, well, this is not a triangle at all, and she's completely got it wrong. So you might be thinking she forgot a very important actor, the environmental community, in this conservation game, or maybe a crucial fact uh, player, the stakeholders, interest groups, developers, farmers, the industry, and many others, and of course the general public with all and everything it represents. And I'm sure you can find many more uh, parts to this hexagon or whatever shape uh, we want to make out of it. Um, our focus today is really on how science can contribute to more successful conservation and to its links with practice and with policy. So this workshop is really part of a one-year initiative aiming at finding ways and better ways and platforms for linking over the long term between the different actors that we just talked about, leading to better science-based conservation, and perhaps even to more conservation-oriented science in Israel. Um, we have partners in this effort who are meeting monthly and discussing these issues from the major conservation organizations in Israel, from some of the universities, from the Israel Ministry of Environmental Protection, from the Jewish National Fund, from the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, from the Society for Protection of Nature, from the Israeli Society of Ecology and Environmental Sciences, from Campus Teva, or Nature Campus in English, from Ramat Nadiv, from Israel's Union for Environmental Defense, that's Adam Teva Vedin, from the Israel Long-Term Ecological Research Network, the Maharag, as well as others, and many of these people are sitting with us here today. Thanks for coming. Um, I want to invite you, while we listen to the talks, to try and think how this applies to your organizations, to your experience, to your work. We always say Israel is totally different. We're not like anything else. Well, I've, I've seen and yesterday and since I've heard these guests that there are many, many similarities from which we may be able to learn and then adapt it to our own system and to our own experiences and needs in Israel. And also, anyone who's interested is most welcome to really send us their ideas, their feedback, and to join this discussion that started in October with this working group. It's been going on for a long time in Israel. And we'll continue with this group uh, until September. So please send us an email, and we'll be very happy to get <coughs> feedback and more ideas. Um, we have a very tight timetable to this morning. We wanted all our overseas speakers to speak this morning. And uh, so at the end of each talk, we'll only take questions for clarification. It should be a question, not a speech. And at the end, 
of the whole workshop, we'll have a discussion panel, which Uriel Safriel will lead, and uh, we'll have time for discussion. So maybe write down your questions to different speakers, and they'll have an opportunity to address them, mostly at the end of the workshop. So I want to thank a lot of people that enabled this day, this workshop, and the visit of our uh, overseas participants. First, I want to thank all of you that showed up. Um, Hugh Possingham always says the most important thing is to turn up, just to show up, so thanks for showing up. Um, I want to thank the Israeli Working Group, many of whom are sitting here now. I want to thank all of you that came over here this morning. I want to thank Ramat and Adiv, that's a very warm thank you to Ramat and Adiv who have really been investing so much in the success and have invited us to hold the workshop over here. Many thanks to many, many people from Ramat and Adiv. Um, that really made an effort for this to work out. Hugo and Liat and Dudu that uh, worked this morning on this microphone. And um, a lot of people that have been working on this, Avito Volotsky as well. And um, I also, also want to thank Uriel Safriel for advising us in this initiative since its start. And uh, the people of my research group at the Hebrew University called the Biodiversity Research Group for really helping us in organizing this workshop. So the first speaker for this morning is Dr. Eric Sanderson. Uh, Eric is a senior conservation ecologist at the Wildlife Conservation Society. He's also the author of the book Manahata. You may have read about it in National Geographic in uh, last July, which tries to show how or reconstruct maybe how Manhattan looked 400 years ago. He also created the human footprint map in a very detailed resolution, and he did a lot of other things that I'll be talking about today. Eric. Somebody said I should get the microphone. Yeah, you can put it a bit higher up. Just a second, just open your thing. Okay, thank you. Shut <laughs> in here. 